Kaz, what about the unit that attacked us in the mist? You knew something about them. That wasn't my first run-in with them. It happened right before I was captured by the Soviets. We were on the Zero Line that day. The Afghan side. On our way back from training the Mujahideen at a mountain camp in Kuna province. There's a lot of that work in Afghanistan. Most PFs shy away from it because it draws too much attention. But for us, that was the whole point. The job itself went great. We just had to make it back to a tribal area in Pakistan. But all of a sudden, visibility got real bad. It was no sandstorm. Our point man gave the strange report. He said he could see skulls in the mist. Skulls. The next moment he went silent. We scrambled into formation, right before his arms and legs came raining down on us. It was always supposed to be a dangerous mission, so I had Diamond Dogs very best with me. We were calling out to each other. But one by one, the voices just went dead. Whatever happened to me, I lost consciousness before I knew it. When I came to, I was in a Soviet camp, tied to an interrogation chair. Could they be some new Spetsnaz unit? No. The ones that interrogated me were just the average rank and file. Whatever group attacked us, the way they moved was just insane. And that mist, appearing out of nowhere. The Soviets don't have tech like that. If they did, Ocelot would have heard about it. I doubt the West does either. Otherwise, the folks at Langley would be sleeping a lot easier. Why'd they come after you? Wish I knew. I'm the only one who survived. Though I don't think they planned it that way. If I was their target, they wouldn't have just handed me over to the 40th Army. Whatever the case, we need to watch our step until we know who they really are. And boss, if you ever do run into them again, don't try to take them on. You just get the hell out of there. When I first started dealing with Zero, with Cypher, it was a somewhat parasitic relationship. Though, a mutually beneficial one. Cypher had no army of their own, so they wanted us. They wanted our strength. They approached me as a potential business partner. But they had other motives. Cypher coaxed us into Central America, into that U.S.-Soviet proxy war, to fuel Mother Base's growth. Once we were big enough, they'd force us to join them. That was the plan. That's why they had Paz still Zeke. Right. And if we refused, she would use Zeke to fire a nuke from Mother Base. The world would consider us a liability. The countries would unite to destroy us. We stopped the launch. And yet they still took us down. Through that fake inspection they orchestrated to cover up their sabotage. That power Cypher wanted. We don't have it anymore. So why are they still after you? Is it just the fear of leaving you alive? I don't know. Was Zero really... All I know is the man I knew wouldn't want this. What do you mean? We have to consider that it might not be Zero we're dealing with. We know virtually nothing about Cypher anymore. How big they've gotten, what they want, or even who they really are. The new mother base started out as a test drilling rig operated by a mineral resources supplier, but their project fell through. The Seychelles government was happy to hand the place over to us. It was just scrap on stilts. Hmm. So with a few dummy construction companies set up as fronts, we started renovating the half-finished rig. From the outside, it looked like the project was back on rails. Kaz, you... What? I see what you're doing. Recreating the mother base we had nine years ago. Only this time. That's right. The mother base Cypher thought they destroyed will return from the grave to kill them. We'll prove to the world that we were the victors. And if we lose again? They can't fool us the same way twice. Now our enemies are in plain sight. And when our organization gets too big, we split it across companies. Any company that draws attention gets liquidated, and its capital is back-channeled into a new company. Most PFs are small-time operations anyway. And in this business, the minnows go bankrupt all the time. We've never aroused suspicion. Plus, we have Hewick. Hewick? Human Exploitation Company. It's a business specializing in intel gathering. Think of it as a civilian intelligence agency. Cause that's... Remember what they were trying to accomplish at the prison facility in Cuba? That gave me the idea. We dispatch moles into conflict zones around the world, and each sets up an intel network on site. Then they stay in place to give us stable points of contact when other nations intervene in the conflicts. Hewick's strength is that it has a cutout at each level. You get your job from one guy, then you hand it off to another. No one has direct access. 
It's a perfect black box. Hewick members also work their way into the superpowers intelligence agencies to make sure Diamond Dogs gets work. We have those countries by the balls. That's our deterrent when we need it. Networking? In the intelligence community? Sure. That's how we've grown this far. And when you go out on missions, intel from Hewick will be there to back you up. But despite all that, Cypher has its eyes on us. The only reason I'm not dead is that they needed to know where you were. Figured if you woke up, I go straight to you. That's why you made that ruckus at the Zero Line. Yeah, to make their own surveillance work against them. I think it took some of the heat off Cyprus. Cause? Then I just had to wait for you to save me. And I've gotten used to waiting. Cause? That's not all. It was a good chance to scout the market. And with the West wanting the Soviets out of Afghanistan, their agencies are bursting at the seams with funding. Boss, let's start by building up our Afghan presence. Why put Mother Base in the Seychelles? We're at the center of the world here. We're all the way out in the Indian Ocean. Come on. Lebanon, Sri Lanka, East Timor, and Africa. From here, our reach extends to conflict zones the world over, including Afghanistan, of course. So it's prime real estate for a mercenary. Exactly. Latin America isn't as close as I'd like, but we have Amanda and her people to help in that department. And besides, the Seychelles government owes us a favor. Owes us? The Seychelles has strong ties to the East, which the West wanted to shake up. It came to a head three years ago, in an attempted coup. It was a force of South African mercenaries, with U.S. backing behind the scenes. They were only platoon size. But South Africa is home to some heavy PFs. Too much for the Seychelles to handle. In the end, they accepted help from the Tanzanian army, and quelled the coup. We set up the deal and handled on-site tactical instruction. That led to some training work for the Seychelles military. And when we put down a mutiny within their forces, well, we made a lot of people happy. They don't pay us. They just let us have a piece of their offshore territory on the promise we'll come running if something else happens. So we're bodyguards, too. It's a good setup. We can only take Mother Base so far here. We'll have to find somewhere else when this place starts getting big. Aren't you being a little hasty? Nothing hasty about it. You're back with us now. So, Kaz, the ship that took us from Cyprus, it used to be a whaler. Yeah, a Japanese vessel. How was the voyage? It was... <sighs> stimulating. <laughs> well, she was part of a whaling fleet up until a few years ago. Her displacement isn't anything to write home about, but she can really move. She still had plenty of life left in her, but then the work dried up. Global opposition to whaling has been mounting for years. Is that right? The push to ban it has been gaining traction for a little over a decade. Individual species came under protection as the years went on. And then two years ago, the IWC adopted a moratorium on commercial whaling. Several countries, including Japan, fought it to the bitter end. But eventually, most whaling companies had no choice but to throw in the towel. You ever tried whale snake? Can't say that I have. When I was a kid in Japan, practically everybody ate it. That good, huh? The country was poor in those days, and whale was cheap. International opinions changed since then. In any case, that's why we were able to get a bargain price on the ship. Of course, we did end up spending five times the purchase price in modifications. We had to really work to fit in all the ESM and communications gear while keeping the whaler look intact. Right now, she's going around conducting SIGIN missions. In the future, we plan to use her as a communications relay base between you and Mother Base, and also as a chopper resupply vessel. Diamond Docks. The word diamond originally comes from the Greek Adamas. It means indomitable, unyielding. Other words for the stones often mean eternal bond, fortitude, or purity. The same is true of the Star of Bethlehem flowers you laid on the boss's grave. They represent innocence, as well as chastity, yielding to no man while maintaining one's virtue. In other words, staying loyal to something. Ocelot said the number of private forces is increasing, and they model themselves after us. They're a far cry from the likes of us. But why? Nine years ago, we made enemies of the world as a nuclear-equipped force, independent of ideology or state. Yes. Sooner or later, the real UN would have stepped in. So why are they giving these PFs free reign? That's our fault, too. 
What do you mean? What happened nine years ago was a real problem for a lot of people. An organization as big as ours, with our facilities, was wiped off the map. Not an easy thing to hide. But if our existence came to light, so would the names of our clients. We had contracts all over, east and west, from superpowers to banana republics, the lot. Our clients denied all association with the likes of us. They had to make sure things didn't blow up on them. But at the same time, they missed us. They really missed us. The demand for armies for hire was as strong as ever. The international community turned a blind eye to what happened to us, despite still needing people who could do our jobs. History couldn't afford to lose us. As soon as we were gone, they needed a replacement. So private forces spread everywhere. And they're all just a phone call away. But still... I know. PFs are totally different from what we envisioned. Nation states, revolutionaries, terrorists... They have a lot of clients, and Cypher is one of them. Cypher stays anonymous, but I know their work when I see it. In the eyes of those clients, the world's PFs are all just expendable pawns. The clients don't have to worry about losing their own men. Nobody knows they're involved, and PFs are cheap. In short, the world is chewing up soldiers and spitting them out. Even some of the old Mother Base's survivors are still working for PFs. Some guys created their own smaller forces. Others were taken on by emerging PFs. Everybody's gone their separate ways. But none of them are living their dream, because they're not fighting with you. Of course, I tried to headhunt as many of them as I could for Diamond Dogs. It was all a waste of time. They said they weren't interested without you to lead them. But now you're back. And everything's gonna change. We'll unite all private forces under you, transcending nations and economies. What is a nation? Just a patch of dirt. The bonds among us will surpass nations, and that's what'll put the world under our control. We'll establish a new kind of country, redefine the very concept of it. Even Cypher will be below us, an extraterritorial federation of military nations, the United States of Force. Once word of Big Boss's return starts traveling, that'll be our true deterrent against Cypher. In other words, no one will dare to come gunning for you. How do you figure? Cypher lacks a large-scale fighting force. PFs are the perfect tool for them. But those PFs revere you, the legendary Big Boss. If Cypher killed you now, they wouldn't take it lying down. Maybe they'd even go looking for revenge, but they definitely wouldn't keep doing Cypher's dirty work even if it put their lives at stake. That's why it's no longer a benefit to Cypher to get rid of you. The very fact that you're alive is our greatest defense against Cypher. Nice to know. It'll buy us some time while we get back to full strength. Just keep in mind that what I'm saying is generalizing a lot. In practice, the PFs around the world don't know your face. Just declaring that your big boss won't be enough to convince them. And if they see you as an enemy, they'll come at you with everything they've got. Some hero. That's why you need to bring them back to Mother Base. Show them on your terms that you really are the one and only Big Boss. Once you've proven that, they won't hesitate to join us. We were lucky to get our hands on that cyborg arm developer. There's no one in Diamond Dogs who can so much as maintain that thing. Bionic arm, not cyborg, if you go by what he calls it. But you're right. The East is light years ahead in biotics. They can even detect through the skin the slight electrical signals from the brain that order muscles to move. The Soviet Union completed their first bionic arm capable of doing that back in the 60s. Although I guess that news didn't really reach the West. No kidding. Zdornov's was the only one I ever saw. Quite a shock to see it for the first time. And it was no mean feat to get hold of Snake's arm. I couldn't get one for you at the time, but you know, now... Forget it. I've no intention of relying on bionics. Right now I need to keep the pain fresh in my mind. Well, it's your decision. But don't you find it... inconvenient? Not a bit. But the phantom pain... It never lets up. Do you know how many men I saw die that day? There's nothing we can do to bring them back. And you expect me to care about getting a measly arm and leg back? <sighs> Sorry. But my pain belongs to all our dead comrades. 
I'll keep living with it for their sake. It'll guide me straight and true until I've gotten them the vengeance they deserve. Diamond Dog's intel team specializes in information gathering, mainly Humint and Sigint. They plant scouts and moles in the field. These operatives will blend into the local populace and work under the guise of a resident, or disguise themselves as travelers and ask around for information. They observe targets using various hidden bugs, cameras, and transmitters, and by tapping their satellite and phone communications. Analyzing all this information creates a clear picture of how wars and the PFs fighting them are changing. This data can also be used for threat assessment when deciding whether to accept contracts from certain clients. And during missions, the intel team keeps track of target locations and produces FOM predictions. Reporting mission critical information based on real-time remote observation of changes in the AO. What you hear from us over the radio is based on how we interpret the data gathered at the command platform. However, intel team operatives go unarmed in almost all situations to avoid revealing themselves to the enemy. Some will carry a knife, but most have nothing at all. As such, don't expect them to help you take on heavily armed adversaries like PF soldiers. Think of them as entirely passive in the hot zone. Plus, they use all manner of techniques to remain inconspicuous in the field. If you ever spot one, you'll have some serious explaining to do. So remember, their specialty is espionage. They may not be of use in a firefight, but when it comes to intel, they're pros. DD makes a pretty good partner, huh, boss? Too early to say. Yeah? Just seeing him come back makes me real proud. What breed is he? He's not a husky. You're right. A Siberian husky is a cross between a spitz type dog and a wolf. That thing Dee Dee might have some wolf blood in him, too. He isn't just smart. He's also shown remarkable judgment. If he doesn't do what you want him to, he's just doing what he thinks is right in the situation. And he's steady under fire. Remember, he's no lab dog. But learn his strengths, and you'll understand each other soon enough. You'll make one hell of a team. Ocelot, why don't you take it upon yourself to train him? Huh? Why? Yeah. When's the last time you heard a wild cat raising a dog? I have an eye for him. I knew at first glance he'd make the right partner for you. Huh. And I figured it was about time he got out into the world. So you passed him off on me. There, you see? I knew you liked him. I don't know about that yet. I still think he's trying to figure me out, too. I'll spend some more time with him. You'll see how helpful he can be. What about you? I prefer to work alone. Ocelots don't hunt in packs. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I'm glad you like him. Dee Dee's really taken to you, too. And to going on your walks. Don't be shy about taking him with you in the future. I'll think about it. Look closely. Those are the symptoms of the infection on Mother Base. The blisters on the body were full of tiny worms. Parasite larvae, most likely. But we couldn't find any adults. It doesn't seem to mature in the body, like a sparganum. We don't know the root of infection, or what causes symptoms to develop. The infection rate, along with the number of dead, are both on the rise. If we don't find the cause, and soon... Boss, do you remember seeing these symptoms before? The bodies floating around in the oil facility? The bedridden test subjects at the Devil's House? This epidemic looks just like what we've seen on our hunt for Cypher. It could be a counterplay by Skullface. That's insane. You mean they weaponize parasites? Parasites as weapons. That definitely falls under the Biological Weapons Convention. But it's something the world would never see coming. And no one's ever developed a vaccine for parasites. So this is the weapon of mass destruction Cypher was working on in Africa? It may be. But if it is, how did the Yellow Cake and Walker Gears fit in? There must be something bigger we're not seeing. Anyway, our priority now is to prevent more casualties. The medical team is studying the infection, but we can't treat anyone until we know the root cause. All we can do right now is halt the spread of infection. Remember before, boss, when Quiet attacked one of our guys on Mother Base, stuck a knife in his mouth. He's one of the very few soldiers who've had contact with her recently. Close contact. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that he was among those who became symptomatic pretty early on in this epidemic. Saliva and blood spatter, an open wound, mucosal infection. Whatever is causing this got inside him then. Miller, that is a baseless accusation. The source of the infection is quiet. Everyone suspects her. We don't know that. And we've come across these symptoms before. The bodies in the water at the oil field facility. Those sick people in the beds at the Devil's House. They're identical to what we've seen while we've been after Cypher. The infection could have come from elsewhere. But at the very least, she does know something. <laughs> it's not like she's gonna talk. No. Not through words, anyway. But what about her actions? Quiet held a knife to that soldier back then, before he became symptomatic. There must have been a reason for that. A reason for shoving a knife down the throat of one of our men. What if she's capable of identifying who's infected? What if she was trying to stop the infection but couldn't communicate that to us? The answer to that, the source of the infection, might be in the mouths of the infected. You think there's some kind of clue in their mouths? I don't know. But maybe there's something about the mouths of those who've become symptomatic, something in common. Something their mouths have in common. Forget it. We can't trust her. Even if she can spot the infected, I don't want her help. I understand how you feel. But this is something to go on. Can't you see it's just like I said? Bringing her here was a big mistake. Quiet is gonna be the end of us. Stand down. You've got zero proof. Try to keep an open mind on this, boss. There has to be a way to identify who's infected. <laughs>